Um, the concept of, of plate tectonics and seafloor spreading is almost mind-boggling in its simplicity and it refuted a lot of things that geologists and geophysicists thought uh, on the same, at the same time it explains a lot of things. Basically what is happening is that our continental plates or the continents are moving. Some are moving away from one another such as Africa is moving away from South America and North America and in the ocean there is a magnetic, if you will, tape of that movement. Um, you would not be aware of it and I certainly wouldn't be aware of it if it were not the results of research in my field that the Earth's magnetic field and compasses point to the north but 30,000 years ago the same compass had it been there would have pointed to the south. The poles reverse polarity periodically and a record of it has been established. Um, for those who want to pursue it you can look up on the Curie point and things of that sort and, and magnetic reversals but the long and short of it is that as rock cools You've all seen, and even the, the youngsters have seen, molten rock being spewn out of a, a volcano. As it hardens, it has one temperature when it solidifies. It has another temperature below that in which all the iron particles become fixed, oriented by the Earth's magnetic field at the time they cool. And we were very confused initially because in drilling down through lava flows, of a volcano with the top ones being youngest and the lower ones being older, we found that the orientation of the magnetic field according to these lower layers pointed in different directions. And so we said, aha, the Earth's magnetic field is moving. It's just slower than we can record. And the British did the same thing, only they said, well, it's moving different from what you guys are saying. And the people from Russia said, no, it's moving in a different direction. And finally, and this is where you want to talk about examples of being wrong, finally someone came up with the idea that the magnetic pole is not moving, it's the continents. But nobody had the guts to talk about that because geophysicists said they can't move the continents, terra firma, until we started drilling in the ocean floor and discovered indeed that in these spreading zones we have bands as each crack opens and cools and then is cracked again, you have parallel bands of alternating magnetic fields that match perfectly with the magnetic changes of the volcano layers coming out in the same time frames, all done with radiometric dating to compare one with the other. At the same time, fossil evidence of the first layers on top also added credibility at that point. And then we find that by backing this up, not by chance or by mathematical mode, but by the width of each of these bands and the flow rates that we can measure today. That's where the measurable came. We actually can measure how far apart one plate is moving from another. Uh, with lasers now, we also can measure the Earth tide, in which all of us go up and down twice a day, just like the sea goes up and down. But until we had the laser to measure very accurately, we couldn't come up with this. And we now can see such things and project even into the future where continents are going. But this process is going on right now and is changing the face of the earth as it has and we can reconstruct back, I would say with reasonable, and I, what reasonable is I can't quite spend the time tonight to tell you, but reasonable accuracy for about 500 million years, but when we talk billions of years, no, because the Earth has not had a crust or an atmosphere or a number of things for its entire life. That crust evolved, that atmosphere evolved, and as each came into place, there are some, and we joked about this, who will try to divide that into sevens and make this the seven days. Uh, this is sort of a wishy-washy thing, a characteristic of political years. 
where people are for the old and for the young, and they're for the rich and for the poor, and anything to get elected. And somehow you have to get this in balance, in a way that you can accept. I could say glibly, you all obey the law of gravity and the first and second laws of thermodynamics much more um, faithfully than you do the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule. And I look at the record of Homo sapiens worldwide to substantiate my position. And I'd be willing to bet 10,000 bucks that nobody will come up with any evidence to refute this. And so when we say through polls what people believe, you're saying that most of these people believe in God. And I say, fine. But were I to place scientific judgment upon that belief, I would judge them by the properties and the quality of their life. And I don't do that simply because who am I to judge? But I emphasize that this is not a battle between science and the Judo-Christian heritage. Science applies to the universe. And every, if indeed we find one day that there are other solar systems with people on it, I'm sure that will be embraced under my many mansions, right? So, if you find the Bible's got it, right. And those people will be living under the same scientific truths that we have established, but not the falsehoods that we as yet do not understand. And that's all I'm saying, is for each of you, we're working, we must recognize we work in two different arenas. The Bible is a text that you accept as being true. And perhaps you have a gentleman like this to interpret it for you, although I favor your interpreting it yourself. On the other hand... So do I, by the way. Okay, well, I, you know, I, I don't know, I don't even know your face, see, so I don't know where you're coming from. Um, you look sort of like a Janus to I'd me. I'd like to have a few okay. people agree with you. I see, I okay. <laughs> right, well, that's, that's always comforting. I like it, too, occasionally. Um, on the other hand, science thrives on the idea of throwing the thing out and seeing people say, no, that doesn't apply. And they say, why doesn't it apply? Well, because over here, I did this and that did not apply. That helps me. That's the feedback that is self-corrective to make my proposition next time better. And it may take a century or more before we refine things to where it is predictable. But look around you of all the things that are pretty close silently on the money. And so it's something you have to cope with and deal with and bring harmonize, uh, or somehow harmonize it with your religious beliefs. Me, I don't need to cut That's you it. off. That's it. I'm off. I'm going, through. But I'd like to have both of you uh, approach it. Obviously, we got young and old. There's a conflict there. Young Earth, old Earth. We got some direct, some um, young people and old people too. Yeah. We, we had some uh, different uh, facts dealing with that. I'd like to deal with as. In your estimation, uh, extra biblical proof, in other words, what's the best uh, evidence that creation is a fact, not just a faith? And then, okay. what is your, and again, what is your best evidence that evolution is a fact, not a faith? And you may say both are faiths or both are facts, or you may say, um, I'm just throwing out the question, what's your best I have several questions about evidences for evolution, evidences for creation, and we're talking scientifically now, not from the standpoint of um, Genesis 1. Okay, um, <clears throat> I would quickly say both are faiths. Uh, neither can so be you, proved. You, you would not say that creation is a fact? I believe creation is a fact, but it's not an empirical, I cannot offer any empirical evidence. By that I mean testable, observable, repeatable, demonstrable in the laboratory, because 